Today, we've come to John to see how Drew's tractor gets its new tires mounted. After all, it's been a long time with his old tires. Drew has decided to go for tubeless 65 series radial tires that are going to serve him and his tractor in the various field works of his farm. He was especially looking for high traction on the field and low soil compaction, but he didn't want to compromise on its road ability as well. I think Drew made a great choice here. John, so what are the most important things to consider before mounting a set of agricultural tires? First of all, tractors hate wrong tires, and you'll hate them too. So it's important to check that the tire and the rim are compatible and that the set is right for the vehicle. There are two tables where you can check this and see the correspondences of rim and tire diameters. You can easily find these tables on your tire manufacturer's website or in their manual. And you can, of course, ask your tire dealer. I am sure he'll be more than willing to help. But what if I need to change the tires later? Can I still use the same rims? Sure, but like I said, only if they are compatible. Just be real critical with the rim. It mustn't be damaged. You can keep reusing the rims till they are in act and have kept their form. And vice versa. If you're mounting a used tire on a new rim, check that the tire is not damaged. If it is, you have to get it fixed before mounting, one way or the other. Okay, well, now they both look new. Yes, shining new. Looks like your efforts on maintenance finally paid off, Drew. So the rim is fine. Let's fit the tire then. What we're going to do first is to lubricate the rim seats and the beads. Like this, above, let's say two inches or so, above the rim edge. What is this lubricant? It's a lubricant specially intended for tires. It's important that you only go for products that are suitable for lubricating a tire. Don't overkill. I know they sound cool, but no silicones, antifreezes, or any other such agents. You could add that to your shopping list. A bottle or tub of lubricant for tire mounting. You could forget otherwise. Well, I'll probably come back here the next time too. I'll get the lubricant anyway. Great. Now we'll position the valve at the bottom and the bead breaker window away from it. This is to avoid any damages on the bead. This might sound very technical, but follow me carefully, gentlemen. Next, we'll lift the tire into the rim so that the first bead is on the rim edge. There. Here we can see an arrow on the tire side. It indicates the rotation direction. Now we're turning the first bead over the edge and push it into the deepest rim well, a little firmly. There. At this phase, lightly tighten the valve nut. Then bring the second bead over the edge and push it inside and tighten the valve nut till the end. There. Now we can slowly inflate to see if the beads are in the right positions. But only to one bar here. Always remember to never inflate tractor drive wheels beyond 35 PSI, 2.5 bar, when seeding the beads. Yes. Wait, hold your horses. What if they're not in the right positions? If they're not, you must start over. It's all a game of patience, dear friend deflate the tire and lubricate it again, and so on. Inflate to one bar and check again, until the beads are in right positions. And when they are, you can start inflating and enjoy watching the tires take shape. Important checkpoints. Check that the rim and the tire are compatible. Check that the combination is suitable for your tractor. Always practice correct mounting and dismounting procedures and make sure you have taken all safety precautions. After mounting the tire, inflate it to seat the beads. Then completely deflate and reinflate to recommended working pressure. Lubricate rim seats, tire beads, inside of the bead. Inflate to 1.0 bar to check the positioning of the beads. Use appropriate tools, lubricants, and protective wear.